Welcome to the Overview Series. This is Episode 1. We're going to look at Milestone Media. The goal of this broadcast is to give a brief overview of Milestone Media. It is not meant to be a comprehensive, detailed account of Milestone. For more detailed information, listeners are encouraged to do additional research on their own. Now, uh, believing that minorities were underrepresented in multimedia, Milestone Media was formed in 1993 by several prominent black writers and artists. These included Michael Davis, Derek Dingle, Denny's uh, Cowan, and the late Dwayne McDuffie. Milestone launched its own imprint under DC Comics banner in 1993. DC Comics acted as the publisher and Milestone supplied the writers and artists. The concept largely revolved around the fictional Dakota City where the titles were primarily focused. Unlike modern comics that simply replace existing white characters, Milestone took a much riskier path. All of the characters were new, original characters that were almost entirely minorities. The creator-owned imprint launched with titles such as Hardware, Blood Syndicate, Icon, and Static. Additional titles would follow as a result of events in the regular ongoing series. Titles like Shadow Cabinet, Zombie, Cobalt, and Heroes were intended to be regular series. There were some miniseries like Death Wish, a uh, hardware spinoff, two Blood Syndicate spinoffs called My Name is Holocaust, and Why Son the White Wolf. There was also a static miniseries called Rebirth of the Cool, and a static miniseries called Trial by Fire. A long multi-part story called Worlds Collide started in July 1994. The 14-part story brought the DC Universe and the Milestone characters together. The crossover affected the Milestone titles and various Superman titles of the time. The Milestone imprint ran from 1983 to 1997 with the longest running title, Hardware, running for 50 issues. Rumors swirled over the reasons as to why the titles weren't selling as well as some of the other books. Suggestions were that the books were considered, quote, black books, end quote, and won't be of interest to non-black readers, and that was used as a justification for the books not being ordered. Regardless of that, there were other problems. One problem that Milestone faced was the overall slump in the comic book market that started in 1993 and became much worse in 1994. And the market crash of the 1990s struck at the wrong point for the launch of a new imprint, especially with many other new titles and companies hitting the market at the same time. The cover price also didn't help. When most DC titles were $1.95, the Milestone books premiered at a price of $2.50, and the cost of the coloring process is often floated as the reason for the cost differential. Whatever the case may be, the sales decline caused cancellations in 95 and 96. The sales numbers from April 1996 are indicative of how bad sales had become. Sales of Icon issue 37, for example, ranked in it number 182. Static 36 came in at 197th place, and Hardware Issue 40 was down at number 200. By 1997, the imprint was done and with all the books canceled. And I believe the character of Static, arguably the most popular character, resurfaced in 2000 when in September of that year, the WB Television Network premiered the animated TV show, Static Shock. Voiced by Phil Lamar, the character of Static was changed from the comic books to fit a younger target demographic. It ran for four seasons with 52 episodes. A brief revival of Milestone occurred in 2008, bringing the characters from the Dakotaverse into the DC Universe. The merger of the two universes was explained when the Shadow Cabinet clashed with the Justice League, and they used the explanation that it was the result of Darkseid's death in the DC storyline Final Crisis. The characters of Icon, Superman, and Dharma, two of which were Milestone characters, obviously, are the only ones that know Dakota City never ex existed in a separate reality. Static would go on to join the Teen Titans, first appearing in Terror Titans issue 4. He also played a major role in the 2009 Teen Titans Annual. He later returned in 2011 in a short-term series set in New York City after the Flashpoint event. Zombie also returned in 2011 in a short-lived series under the DC banner as well. In 2010, there was a limited series called Milestone Forever, which revisited the characters briefly. According to a 2015 Comic Book Resources article on CBR.com, a milestone return to DC was announced at the San Diego Comic Con. It seems the plan was to release miniseries and one-shots to reintroduce the main heroes and villains, and perhaps some new characters. This would take place in the original continuity of the Decodeverse, now labeled as Earth-M. Reginald Hudden was quoted by CBR as saying, quote, 
I felt that the most successful static series were in their own world. I thought in the case of Milestone, they were stronger on their own. End quote. However, as we re enter 2018, this return to DC has yet to come to pass. With, while the future of Milestone might appear to be hazy, there is always a chance that those heroes will rise again.